A couple of months ago I reviewed a prototype of the game Last Spikes by Columbia Games, a, game, a company that makes a lot of war games and I played a lot of their games, I like them very much. Last Spike is a little different because it is a train game, so it's a Euro game type game where you make money and then you spend money to make more money. And, um, but it still has blocks, it still has wooden blocks. Uh, one of the things for which Columbia Games is famous is for the block, their block war games. War games that use uh, wooden blocks with stickers on them. Interesting enough, they also have a training game that yet again uses uh, wooden blocks. And similarly to what happens in their military uh, games so with wooden blocks, also those blocks are used for secrecy, that is to hide information. In this case you will see the blocks have a sticker on one side only, just like in war games, and those are placed face down so you can shuffle them and assign them randomly. I did film a video about the gameplay, so I'm not gonna go through the rules of the game again, you can watch my original video for the prototype, gameplay hasn't changed uh, since, um, so if you want to know the rules there it is a video for that. This will mainly be a component overview of the final product, the game that you get on your doorstep if you order one from Columbia Games. Now that we have the final published version. The box is a typical Columbia Games box, uh, that is these generic black boxes with a sleeve that goes on it so it doesn't look too sad and depressing and you can tell the games apart. It looks nice, uh, like nice, uh, nicely done, just like all games by Columbia and most of their covers. Not the most exciting ones that are out there, uh, but definitely Definitely good ones, good art. As for the components themselves, so we have the board finally. Uh, the board is made of cardstock, it's not super thick as you can see, it's not super resistant, but it works. It lays down flat, especially if you do a little bit like this. Then ta da! It, okay, you have to do it a little bit. There you go. It works. Um, the game in the game you will get the wooden blocks that I mentioned earlier you will have your own pool you will lay down tracks you will be forced each turn to add a wooden block from your pool and place it on the board to build the tracks to form this rail the, this net of rails so that goes from San Luis to Sacramento or Sacramento to San Luis is the same you will build your tracks and you will also buy cards that will represent your interest in the city so that when a city is connected with a railroad so the, you will get money, your investment will pay off based on how much you invested on that city. How is that done? Well, let's start with the wooden blocks first. The wooden blocks that you use to lay tracks are these ones. They have all well, the symbol of a railroad and they have an indication of where they go on the board. For example, this one, A3, must go here in an area that is marked as A3. And they also have a price which indicates how much money it costs to lay down that track. So that depending on how difficult it is to reach a certain region, for example, because a certain sectional track needs to cross a river or needs to go through mountains. Some are more expensive and some are less expensive. That is factored in by the location and the cost for that specific location. When you lie down tracks, you need to put them adjacent to a location, to a city or adjacent to a previous piece of track. Otherwise, you have to pay double if you're building in the middle of nowhere. Material, com material components, wood, black wooden blocks, uh, good quality, standard good quality of Columbia blocks uh, with stickers that stick well, didn't have any problem to take them off the sticker sheet, that is a problem that I've had in some of recent Columbia with some recent Columbia block games, so these ones came off the sticker sheet easily, they applied easily, and they had this metallic feel to them, which makes them nice and technological, a little bit of cyberpunk somewhere in there. I don't know, I'm just seeing things. Money! This is the money. Uh, these blocks look so nice. These money coins, not so much, these generic 
chips. I don't know, maybe even just a, a sheet of stickers where I can uh, where they can then apply on these generic discs uh, to print the value on them, to indicate the value. They just look a little blank. Well, they are blank. They just look a little bland. Um, I don't know, they're not all that exciting. Better than paper money, but so many things are better than paper money. Then the last component that we have is the cards. Uh, each city has a stack of cards. For example, say we have Huma, El Paso. And in a turn, after you uh, lay tracks on the board, you can buy land. You can buy one of these cards indicating your interest in the land surrounding that area. And you always have to start from the top one. As you can see, each city has a stack of cards with increasing costs. The cost is the number that you see on top. The first one is for free and you get it when first you lay tracks starting from that city first you connect that city uh, with some tracks so the first one is for free and then you can buy when it is your turn after you lay track you can buy one of these cards from any of the available decks but you have to buy the the top one once a city is connected with a track the city pays off when you connect two cities, then the cities that have been connected pay off and the amount of money that you make is based on how many cards you have. And you look at this table here. So for example, if I have interest in Denver and I have three cards, when Denver is connected to another city, then I gain $15,000. If I had 20, 000, if I had four cards, I would get 20,000. If I only have one, I get 5,000. That simple. The more cards you have on a certain line, the more money you get when you uh, when you connect the cities in that line. However, that also means that if you have all of the ones in a single line, uh, other players are not gonna help you to build that one because you're the only one that benefits from it. So probably they're gonna, if they get the blocks, uh, which is likely, let well, me make it likely to get all the blocks for a single line, but if somebody has those blocks, they're trying to hold on to them for as long as possible unless that they have other interests uh, on the board and so they're forced to play the block is the last one that they have. But the idea is that you're trying to find a balance to have some interest in a lot of of different areas so that you can help each other out, other players can help you and uh, they don't gang up against you. There is this fine balance that needs to be reached between pursuing your interests and pretending to also be working with other players. That is really what's going on here. Component-wise, the cards are pretty good. They look fairly, not super thick, but frankly, I'm not gonna sleeve them which doesn't say anything because I don't sleeve any cards. But even if I were a guy that kind of sleeves uh, games from time to time, cards in games from time to time, I may consider not sleeving these ones. And if you sleeve all your cards, why even like, you know, watch your reviews about how are the cards? You're gonna sleeve them. Why do you care? Uh, they're good cards. They are um, good playing cards. Also remember, in any case, these cards are not gonna take much uh, much love from you, much physical activity, because they're not cards that go in your hand and you shuffle them, you simply collect them, they stay on the board, on the table. When you get one, you put it on the table by you. So they're not gonna take um, a lot of activity from you. They really are just references to how much money you have invested in each area and how much money you'll get. So they're not cards that need to be sturdy and durable for them to last a long time. So these are the components for the last spike uh, and I also gave you a general idea of some of the main rules. Um, if you want to know more about the rules please feel free to watch my video for the prototype. The rules are exactly the same. Oh the rule book I didn't show it to you the rule sheet really. It's just a rule sheet. It's well done. It takes into account the new components like the metallic stickers on the blocks. As you can see, this is the as you can see it tells you how it shows you, even if you don't read it, how absolutely simple, accessible, um, gateway type of game this is. This is a game that grandpa can play, and that Uncle Bill can play when he comes to visit, that you can play with very young gamers. Everybody would get it. And it is still pretty enjoyable. I really actually enjoy this game. I'm not a big fan of train games, but this is one that I can play without getting um, a headache. Which is good. Uh, that's not what happens when you play 18xx games. Those games are uh, just too hard for me. Anyways, 
the last spike. Now we have the final edition. It's a good game and with the published edition, not just with the paradigm floating around, we also have a game that looks good and is definitely playable. And it's, it's materially, component-wise, this is a good product, no doubt.